In this video, I'm going to show you what's possible with a small portable deep sky imaging rig like this, with a portable camera tracker and a small telescope. The plan is to take four minute exposures that are sharp, unguided, to create an amazing deep sky image. Tonight I'll be capturing a wide field deep sky object using an impressive little camera mount, the Ioptron Skyguider Pro. I've taken countless deep sky images with this little mount, but this time I've added a specialized device that makes a critical step of the process easier and more precise. The Ioptron iPolar electronic polar scope uses a small camera to aid in the positioning of the polar alignment process. It tells me exactly where the mount needs to be to accurately polar align the mount with the North Celestial Pole. It works a lot like the QHY Pole Master, only this device was built specifically for Ioptron mounts such as the Skyguider Pro. There's a nearly full moon coming up later tonight along with Jupiter and Saturn nearby. So I'm gonna take out the eight inch daub and take a closer look at these a little later, but what I'm really interested in is the deep sky object I'm gonna be capturing with this little rig right here. I'll tell you the deep sky target that I'm shooting in a moment, but first I thought I should go through the rig you see right here. This is the Ioptron Skyguider Pro. This is the extended counterweight shaft from William Optics. This is the William Optics uh, upgraded wedge for the Skyguider Pro. This is a William Optics Red Cat 51 quadruplet APO refractor. That is a Canon 60DA DSLR camera. Inside of the adapter for the Red Cat is an Optolong L Enhance filter. I think that's it. Oh, and a carbon fiber tripod I got on Amazon. Oh yeah, in the, the dew heater strap here. It's a Kendrick dew heater strap with a little controller. As many of you already know, the Ioptron Skyguider Pro's job is to match the apparent rotation of the night sky for long exposure deep sky astrophotography. It slowly moves along with the night sky at side reel rate to match its movement. Very simple, yet extremely powerful. If you watched my last video, you'll understand why I'm using a filter like the Optolong L Enhance tonight. This dual bandpass narrowband filter lets in light emitted from hydrogen alpha and oxygen three only and blocks everything else. So with that bright moon coming up later tonight, I'm gonna to need it to filter out moonlight as well as the glow from the city. Hi buddy. Tonight the deep sky target is the North America Nebula in Cygnus, NGC 7000. This emission nebula is big, bright, and most importantly, it's friggin' huge. If that weren't enough, it's also in an area with plenty of nebulosity, including the equally impressive Pelican Nebula right next to it. With a focal length of 250 millimeters, the Red Cat will fit this entire area in a single frame using my crop sensor DSLR camera. I'll have limited time to collect light on this target because we're nearing summer solstice, so the nights are very short and very warm. 
I'll capture as many exposures as I can in the short time I have available to create an impressive deep sky image of the area. When you shoot with a narrow bandpass filter like the Optolong l Enhance, the goal is to collect as much light in an isolated wavelength on your target as possible. Usually this requires much longer exposures than you typically would shoot in broadband true color. So that puts a higher demand on tracking accuracy and polar alignment as you go longer. With a focal length of 250 millimeters or an equivalent of 400 with my crop sensor camera, that's some pretty demanding optics to shoot an exposure of four minutes. And that's where the Ioptron iPolar comes in. When you're shooting with a telescope or a camera lens, 200 millimeters or longer, it starts to become demanding on your polar alignment and your tracking accuracy of your mount. The Ioptron Skyguider Pro comes with a built-in polar scope that you can use to manually eyeball your polar alignment with the help of an app on, say, your phone. This is the way I've used the Skyguider Pro for years, and I did exceptionally well with this. The problem is if you want to go longer than that, say in the three or four minute range, you really better make sure that your polar alignment is accurate. As good as I can do with the manual method in my eyeball, it can never match what's possible using a camera and plate solve technology to polar align. I've seen Ioptron Skyguider Pro owners mounting telescopes as big as the William Optics Z73 APO with a 50 millimeter guide scope attached. These are some serious deep sky imaging rigs and a dedicated electronic polar finder is definitely an upgrade to think about if it's your main deep sky imaging rig. Until the iPolar recently came out, owners of the Skyguider Pro, their options were to mount a QHY Pole Master using a custom adapter. I know there's a lot of people that managed to do this successfully, and if so, congrats to you. The difference now is that these iPolar cameras were built specifically for Ioptron mounts like the Skyguider Pro, and they mount on so many of them from the, the CEM25, the CEM60. Uh, there's a complete list of supported Ioptron mounts for the iPolar. So I think it's an interesting upgrade for a lot of people because I know there's a need for it. I will say that the experience using the iPolar felt very familiar, of course, to the, my experience using the QHY Pole Master. It's essentially the same where you're using a camera to pick out the faint stars and to give you an ultra useful guide to fine tune your altitude and azimuth bolts on your mount to on a level of precision you could never get with your eye alone. The iPolar installation process was interesting to say the least. If you're technologically sound and you're used to tinkering with things, taking apart the Skyguider Pro to install this camera might be no big deal to you and actually kind of fun. For people like me, it was a little daunting to open it up and remove the control board and uh, unplug the, the little cables in there. All in all, it took about 20 minutes Ioptron provides an, a very helpful PDF instruction manual, and as you can see, I did it successfully. Each Ioptron mount will have a different process for installing the iPolar camera. The Skyguider Pro is relatively straightforward, and it includes this adapter bracket, um, so you can actually close it off nice and neat. The actual process of polar aligning the mount using the iPolar is very straightforward and easy. So the software I downloaded on the iOptron website, the device was recognized on my Windows PC right away. It uses a mini USB cable. As soon as it's dark enough to start seeing stars near the North Celestial Pole, it will plate solve the image telling the iPolar where your telescope mount is pointed. After that, it provides a cross and a red dot showing the, the NCP, the North Celestial Pole, and where your polar axis is currently pointed. From there, it's simply a matter of adjusting the bolts, fine tuning it to get it really dialed in. It's a back and forth process, looking at the screen, making adjustments to the bolts, and uh, just knowing that you're getting a better and better polar alignment, getting closer to perfect, is very motivating to, uh, to really get it bang on. The iPolar works as expected, no surprise. A four minute exposure using the iPolar to polar align 
razor sharp stars, even at this equivalent 400 millimeter focal length in a four minute exposure. So that's really impressive, unguided on a little mount like the Skyguider Pro. Truth be told, I would have shot even longer than four minutes if it wasn't so hot out. My shots were coming out at 28 degrees Celsius each, just cooking that poor sensor in my 60DA. Here's how I feel about devices like the iPolar on the Skyguider Pro. It's an obvious upgrade for some of the larger mounts, some of the you know primary deep sky imaging rigs, uh, as, as a useful way to just really dial in your polar alignment. For mounts like the Skyguider Pro, I considered it to be my portable, quick setup, grab and go mount. I mean, it's got an internal lithium ion battery. I love that about it. I wouldn't ever hook it up to the laptop. It was just a remote shutter release cable, DSLR only, pick it up, put it on the beach, bring it camping wherever I want. Now that I've installed this iPolar, I have to polar align using computer controlled software only. I've physically taken out the visual polar finder scope. I mean, I could put it back in, but I put this camera in here now. So now I'm gonna have to connect to my computer anytime I wanna polar align the mount. So yes, I'm gonna be able to really dial in my polar alignment on another level and shoot way longer than I ever could on this mount before at the cost of complexity and adding more gear. So if I wanna bring this somewhere to a dark sky site, I'm gonna need it to bring a portable battery pack. Not a big deal for a lot of you, uh, but for someone it's worth thinking about, do you really wanna make this change if the setup is already the way you like it and you're getting good results with the built-in uh, standard polar finder scope. However, if the Skyguider Pro is your main astrophotography mount, like I said, the, the people I've seen with the uh, with a Z73 and a 50 millimeter guide scope on there, full auto guiding everything, then yes, it makes a lot of sense to get something like the iPolar to really take your rig to the next level. Uh, chances are you already have a computer next to the mount or you're using something like the ASI Air and you're already well connected. So adding an iPolar is no big deal for you. All in all, there's no surprises. I knew it would be straightforward and easy to use. Very similar to the QHY Pole Master process, but I know a lot of people had trouble finding the correct adapter if there even was one for the Pole Master and the Skyguider Pro and all the other Ioptron mounts. So the iPolar was developed to fill a need from the astrophotography community and it does its job well. I hope you enjoy the image at the end of the video and until next time, clear skies. A lot of people rely on me to review equipment and for some people, my endorsement goes a long way. That puts some serious pressure on me to show the good and the bad of the gear that I use. The truth is, I don't care what equipment you use to get the job done. I try to show the results possible because this hobby is about photography, the pictures. However you get there is cool with me. I just ask that you rise above any negativity or discouragement that could possibly take this incredible feeling away from you. I protect my passion. It's too important to lose sight of it. How important is this hobby to you?